some of the guys over for dinner the other night, and I pulled I pulled the five out that, that we have, and they're just like, whoa. <laughs> Well, you remember Dan Ryan? Dan's our strength coach now. Oh, and, no kidding. And, and, he, and when he was moving stuff into his office, he had a couple of his rings, and the guys saw him, and they're like, whoa, those are, those are cool. And, and like I said, I had them over for dinner. I said, here, I'll show you all of them. And they're like, that's awesome, man. Whoa. It's like, yeah, they're kind of fun to get. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, I said, get it for the middle finger, because that way you get a bigger one. Because I got, I think the last three, sorry, the last three that we got, I got for the middle finger. So they could, I got, they're like huge. <laughs> um, well, Coach, take us through uh, just maybe the last six months for you in Northern Iowa for a brief moment, and all of a sudden now you're head coach yeah, in the Big State Conference. So, uh, what's this whole last six or eight months been like for you? Uh, you know, I've been telling a lot of people it's been a whirlwind, you know, uh, uh, something you don't expect to happen uh, at that time of year. You, uh, you know, expect coaching changes to occur in December. And you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to get a job that way. But you know, some, you have to do what you have to do sometimes. Uh, got back from Northern Iowa and uh, worked late hours getting practice ready because we start spring ball on that the following Thursday. And so I had to get all everything organized and uh, got it done and got the kids ready to go. I had a couple meetings with them and they they bought into bought into the system. Them big time, you know, just bought into the message we were bringing and what we wanted to do. So, I think the fact that you had some experience with these guys, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, there's no, there was no uh, learning curve in terms of familiarity. You know, they knew me, I knew them, um, and and that made it a lot easier. I knew, I knew what problems that I felt needed to be addressed or what how things needed to be. You know, run a little differently, and uh, it, it wasn't a whole. Like I said, I, I knew who the players were, I knew their talents, and and that was actually that was actually the same bringing Matt Troxel back. You know, he didn't have a, a, a new learning curve with with the guys as well. So it, it's it's been a it's been a seamless transition, you know, which is fortunate. What are some of the biggest changes that uh, you feel you need to do? Well, just uh, structure. We have a, we have, you know, uh, well, the first was this summer getting the kids to stay. Uh, in the past, they've never had more than 15, 20 kids stay, and, 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 and we had 50. You know, we were averaging 50 a day, and that's unheard of at Idaho State in a long time. Uh, so they believe. You know, we, we put it to them during spring ball, look, this is what college football is. Everybody's doing this. You know, to a, to a normal person, it's abnormal, but to a football person, it's normal. You know, and this is and this in, and in order to be competitive, this is where it starts. You know, you don't just show up in August and all of a sudden get to play games. It doesn't work that way. Um, so that was that was the first thing, and then just like I said, structure, structure, um, giving them. You know, in terms of practices, we went we went way more detailed with what we were doing in terms of situations and uh, all you know those type of things. Do you have a lot of experience. In this year, so yeah. is that a, is that helpful? I mean, how do you transition that? How do you, how do you yeah, yeah, but the league has changed so much. I mean, it's it's it, there's 13 teams now. <laughs> and, yeah, and so uh, it's there's some familiar you know a lot of familiar faces, but everybody seems to have you know the only guy that's still around is Jerome. <laughs> Everybody else is even from the, the the five years I was gone at UNLV. You know, it seems like it's all changed. I can't think of anybody else that uh, it'll be. Uh, but but it's still you know uh, the championships probably go through the Montana schools. You know, we always said that. Um, and those are great places to play. They're fun to play. You know, you got to beat your rival. Got to win some games on the road. You know, that's that 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 doesn't change. You know. Do you feel you can channel any of the, the success and things you learned at Montana into the culture you're trying to build? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, that, and, and I have to thank Bobby Houck for that because I've I've uh, retained more Bobby Houck 
than I thought I did, you know, over 12 years. And and the way the way he operates is a very successful uh, uh, formula. And I think if if you know, and I'm not Bobby Houck, but you can use a lot of the stuff that that he did in terms of organization. And uh, you know, and the kids I think respect the fact that I was at Montana for those seven years and say hey you know this is what it takes guys you know they, they, you know what do you what do you think why do you think Montana it wasn't just because we had a grizz on our helmet and we put you know and and it wasn't it wasn't that's not why Montana was so good during those years with Bobby is we were putting the work in you know that's what the fans didn't see how much how much was going on behind the scenes and that's what and that's what's going on right now at Idaho State you know and it, it's a small step it'll be a small step but uh, hopefully we, we can get there what uh, what do you see the sense of belief that there is potential to rebuild or something just I, I the kids have bought in they're they're not fighting it they're doing what they're supposed to do and and it's that's where it starts right there uh, uh, I think we have we have some talent, uh, you know, and and the reason why we're picked last and don't have any all-conference players, well, you're two and nine. Well, we're, we're going to give those kids an opportunity, a chance to be successful and see and, and let the chips, you know, fall. Schematically, will you guys look different than you have in the last few years? Yeah, we'll we'll yeah we'll be schematically uh, a little bit different, a little bit more. Consistent it might look more like that 2014 team, Don Bailey's offense. Similar to that, not his offense, but but similar. Last question for you: What uh, what are your expectations for this season? Compete. Um, you know, if I go in and say, "Yeah, we're going to win eight games," you know, you can't you can't say that. We gotta we gotta we gotta compete. We got to uh, play hard in the fourth quarter. You know, anybody can come out and uh, and you'll 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 know this. And anybody can come out and play hard in the first quarter, right? But it's who plays. We got we got to play hard for long periods of time. Yep, yep. South Dakota State, 09. But uh, anybody can play in the first quarter. But you got you got to play all the way to the fourth quarter. And then and then there's a Hendrick Motorsports saying that that they use when they when they start a race team. That, that I, I love and it's and it's go from an upstart to a contender contender to a winner winner to a champion champion to a dynasty well we're an upstart and we and we before we get to be a winner we got to become a contender and and if you look at it that way then you're not setting unrealistic expectations Does that make sense Thanks, coach.